Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to detect collisions when programming a robot in the 3D world. For example, you may want to know if the robot collides with other objects or gets too close to them when you're teaching the robot to pick and place parts. To get started, let's build a simple layout in the 3D world. I'll go to the eCatalog panel, expand models by type, then click Component Templates, and let's add a feeder template and a conveyor template. Let's now add a robot, so under Models by Type, I'll expand Robots, scroll down, click Visual Components, and I'll add this robot here, the generic articulated robot, to the 3D world, and I'll move the robot close enough to the feeder and the conveyor, so right about here is fine. Let's now mount a tool to the end of the robot's arm here. So in the eCatalog panel, I'll collapse Robots, then expand Tools, then click Visual Components, and I'll add this item here, this parametric suction gripper. I'll then plug the gripper into the end of the robot's arm there. Now that we have a basic layout in the 3D world, let's teach this robot. I'll go to the Program tab. I'll then use the Jog command to select the robot in the 3D world. I'll then go to the Jog panel and set the tool property of the robot to use this imported tool frame called Gripper Tool 1 as its TCP. And let's see what happens when we move the robot to collide with this conveyor here. So let's move the robot over there. And now the robot is inside the conveyor, but we don't get any visual feedback that this collision has occurred. So if you want to show that, let's go to our collision detection group here. And to turn on collision detection in the 3D world, you want to select this checkbox here called Detectors Active. So what this means is that you're turning on all detectors in your layout. They're becoming active. And if you want to see what collision detectors you have, you can click this arrow here. And by default, every layout has this detector. It's called Selection Versus World. And right now it's turned on, but you can turn it off if you want to. And what this means is what you have selected right now in the 3D world can be compared to all other components. So if your selection collides with other objects, you'll get feedback in the 3D world. So right now I have the robot selected. And if I move it again to collide with the conveyor, we can see we get visual feedback that these parts in the robot have collided with these parts in the conveyor. Now, this gripper is a child component of the robot. It's attached to it, so that's why it's also highlighted. So once again, what you have selected in the 3D world can be compared to all other objects. So if I select this gripper here and move the robot down, we can see that, yep, there we go, that right now the robot, this part of the robot, is inside the conveyor, so it's colliding with it, but our detector is only set to compare the nodes in our selection with all other components. So right now only this gripper is being compared to components. So if I move the gripper to collide with a conveyor, we now get feedback that this collision has occurred. So that's how selection versus world works. And if we go back to our detectors, we can see we have a couple options here. So detect collision, this can detect all collisions when they occur in the 3D world, or you can just detect the first parts of the components that collide with one another. So if I actually set this to be first, and then let's actually select our robot. So this way the selection includes the robot and its child component here. And now when it collides with this conveyor, we can see that this part in this gripper here is highlighted and this conveyor. But now if I move the robot down a bit, other parts of the robot are colliding with the conveyor, but they're not being highlighted right now. That's because the first collision between this selection and this object occurred here in these parts or in these nodes. So that's the difference between detection a collision when it first occurs or all collisions. So if I actually move the robot over here, go back to my detectors and set it to be all, and then move the gripper once again. Notice that this part of the robot collided with a conveyor first, but now these parts of the robot are colliding with a conveyor, so that's why they're being highlighted. So it's detecting all collisions when they occur. But then when you have the first option, notice that it's detecting those first parts. So right here, at first, this part of the robot collides with this conveyor. And when you keep on colliding, you know, only that first highlighted part is showing. And the same for the conveyor. In some cases, you may want to detect a collision before it occurs. So when the robot collides with this conveyor, you may want to stop the robot or know if a collision will occur based on some tolerance level. So before the robot gets close enough to the conveyor, you want to kind of highlight where the collision might occur. To do that, go to the collision detection group, 
show your detectors and right here you have two options you have what's called a collision tolerance and show minimum distance so if I actually turn on show minimum distance notice that it sets the collision tolerance to be 50 millimeters so now if the robot gets close enough to the conveyor or within 50 millimeters we can see that a collision is highlighted for us in the 3D world so it's detected between this gripper and the robot and this conveyor and the minimum distance between those parts right now that was detected is 41 millimeters so if I keep on moving the robot close enough it keeps on detecting the collision and it's showing the minimum distance here so let's actually see what happens when we do a different part of the robot there we go so it highlights the part of the robot that's going to collide with the conveyor and the minimum distance between them so you can see the collision before they occur now of course you may want to use a different tolerance level so let's actually go back to our detectors and set the collision tolerance to be uh, let's say 100 and now in our 3D world let's go back you can see right now the robot is within that tolerance level of 100 so the minimum distance between this part and this part of the other object is about 84 millimeters but if I move it greater than 100 notice that nothing is highlighted there's no collision detected right now let's go ahead and see what happens when the robot moves and collides with an object during a simulation so let's actually teach our robot real quick I'll reset and then set the TCP of the robot back to that imported tool frame and let's move the robot all the way over here and we still have collision detection turned on so now let's move the robot all the way down here and make this a point-to-point -point motion so in the program editor panel I'll add a point-to-point -point motion statement to the main routine let's reset and now let's slow down our simulation just a bit so we can see what happens so I'll run the simulation the robot goes into strike and our collision is being highlighted for us in the 3D world but the simulation is not being stopped usually you want to stop the simulation when a collision occurs and then try to fix the problem so let's reset the simulation and then our collision detection group you want to select this option here called stop on collision so now when I run the simulation let's see what happens notice that the simulation stops when a collision is detected in this robot and the other object here this conveyor so we're using that tolerance level so before these components collided with one another you know the simulation was smart enough it detected that a possible collision can occur and here's the minimum distance let's actually reset our simulation and let's turn off that tolerance level so in our detectors let's actually set our collision tolerance to zero and you can see by default that will set our show minimum distance option here it will clear the checkbox so now let's run our simulation robot goes into strike and now the simulation is stopped when the collision actually happens so this gripper collided with a conveyor here and that's why the simulation was stopped so that's the difference between stopping a simulation when a collision is detected before it occurs and when a collision actually happens you know the objects collide with one another okay we now know enough about collision detection to start making our own detectors so let's reset the simulation go to the collision detection group and show our detectors and instead of using the selection versus world detector let's actually turn it off and then create our own so I'll click create detector and what do we want to add to our detector so what it's doing is it's comparing the nodes of components in this list called A and the nodes of components listed here for list B so for our first list, list A let's add the robot so I'll just click it here in the 3D world and on the mini toolbar I can add it to list A or to list B so let's add it to list A you can see it's now highlighted green or the color of that list and in the detector properties panel here you can see it has the robot and all of its nodes so if I actually expand everything real quick you can see the mount plate of the robot is selected but if you do your detector this way notice that the gripper is not included right now in the detector so if I select it I can add it to list A or you actually can go to the detector properties panel here and click this button to add it to your selection and you notice it's right listed there let's now compare the robot and the gripper in our list A to components in list B in this case the conveyor so I'll select the conveyor in the 3D world or just click it and then add it to list B so notice it's highlighted blue which is the color of, of, of this list here so now when I run the simulation we can see that a collision occurred between the parts in list A when it collides with the parts in list B so it was that gripper well, let's see what happens when we exclude the gripper from our detector so if I go back to list A in the detector properties panel and turn off the suction cup gripper 
this component's root node. Let's see what happens. Notice that the collision now occurred between the mount plate and the robot and the conveyor, not this gripper. So if we reset again and turn off all these nodes and the mount plate in the robot and axis 6, let's see what happens. Notice we get a different type of collision. So now the collision is occurring between this part of the robot and the conveyor here. I think that's probably axis 5, so let's keep on working our way up. So let's turn off axis 5 and axis 4. Run the simulation again. And notice we don't get any recorded collision right now in the 3D world. Nothing is detected. So let's actually turn axis 3 back on. I'm sorry, axis 4. And let's exit out of our detector properties. So you can see it's now listed here in our detectors. So it's called collision detector. And let's run our simulation. And notice we can now get a collision detected between this part of the robot, or axis 4, and this part of the conveyor. So once again, let's reset. Go back to our detectors, and if you want to add a detector, just click this button here. And then add the nodes of components to either list A or list B, and then those nodes will be compared to one another to detect a collision in the 3D world. And in some cases, when you have a component selected in the 3D world, a detector will automatically be configured for you. So I had the conveyor selected in the 3D world, so notice it's in list A, but all the other components in the 3D world are now in list B. So we actually want to exclude the feeder from this node list, or we actually can just delete it here. So now the generic robot and the suction gripper are going to be compared to this conveyor template. So if I run the simulation, notice that a collision is detected between the gripper and the robot and the conveyor. So if we go to our detectors, we can see we have this detector set up, but let's actually rename it. So let's go to our detector properties and rename this to be conveyor versus robot plus gripper. And if I go back to my detectors, we can see the name is updated there. But it's probably a bit too long, so you can probably rename this to be a bit shorter if you wanted to. Now before I end the video, I want to show you how these collision detectors are saved with the layouts. So I'm going to first close this detector properties task pane. And now I'll save my layout. So I'll go to the file tab and click save. And I actually already saved this layout before, so you can see it's name listed here. But otherwise you can just use the save as command. And now let's go ahead and clear the 3D world. So I'll go to the Home tab, press Control plus N to clear the 3D world. And that also closes the layout. And now if I go to my My Models source here in the eCatalog panel, there's the layout I saved. I'll go ahead and open it in the 3D world. And now if I just run the simulation, the robot goes down to the conveyor. And notice that collision detector I set up between the conveyor and the robot and scripper. It's still there. It was saved with the layout, so now it's active and the simulation stopped when it detected that collision. Likewise, if I go back to the program tab and look at the detectors, you can see, yep, there are the detectors I added. So let's see what happens when we clear this layout but load it again, but we have the detectors turned off in the 3D world. So let's turn that off now, and we can see that you get the automatic update here about the collision in the 3D world. It's no longer active, those detectors. So let's clear the layout again, go back to the Home tab, add the layout, and if we now go back to the Program tab, the detectors are still there, and they're turned on, but the detectors are no longer active in the 3D world. So if I run the simulation, notice that nothing is detected, no collision, and the robot just goes down and inside the conveyor. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.